It's amazing how simple, how sweetly simple our Lord made the message of salvation. Uh, people oftentimes say about me, they say, he preaches an easy believism. And if it said to me, I'd say, thank you. I certainly do. That's exactly what I preach. I preach an easy belief, if you mean belief, if you mean faith in Christ, uh, the simplest thing in this world is to get saved. You have, to, you have to do an obstacle course to get saved. You have to join anything, or hold on, or hang out, or, or, or let go. As one young fellow was at the altar of Pentecostal Church, he, he, uh, he said, I want to get saved. And one lady said, you really want to get saved? He said, yeah, but I dread the ordeal. And uh, finally, he's try, trying to get saved. And after it's all over, said, did you get saved? He said, I don't know. Why? Well, he said, I was there at the altar. And one lady came by and hit me on the back and said, let go, let go. And another lady came by and said, hold on, hold on. He said, I don't know whether I let go or held, held on. But said, I hope I'm saved. No, it's not that hard. The fellow said, you've got to pray through. One of the boys said, Johnny didn't get saved, Mama. He just got down on one knee. No. You don't have to get on one knee or two knees or any knees. I like what Dr. Rice says. He says, he says some of you folks, salvation praying so complicated. He said if Peter prayed like some of you preachers do on Sunday morning while he was sinking in the water. Oh, he said, Lord, save me. He said, everybody knows that's no way to pray. He said, if Peter said, Lord, thou the great omnipotent, omniscient, blub, 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 blub. He'd been gone. He'd been gone. So the Lord said when he spoke to the great crowd, he said, listen, you folks are not saved this morning. Don't make it so hard. Our Lord spoke about salvation. He spoke about likened it to eating a meal. Are you hungry? Okay, here's a meal. Come and eat it. Can you do that? Is that very, very hard? Jesus likened salvation to a great table spread with a great meal. And he said, here, come, come and eat. And that's the way you get saved. Like, come and eat. He likened salvation to a marriage. Here comes a, here's a fellow standing at the altar, and here comes a, a young, beautiful lady, young lady down the aisle. And uh, she says, I take thee, George, to be my husband. And he says, I take thee, Susie, to be my wife. And the preacher says, you just took each other, and I pronounce you husband and wife. Or as the Indian ceremony said, want them, want them, got them. And, uh, and just as simple as that. And you just give yourself. Our Lord said, getting, get, getting saved is that way. You come to Jesus and say, Jesus, you, in, you invited me to come. You proposed to me. I take you as my Savior, just as simple as that. He didn't make it hard. He didn't make it difficult. He didn't make it hard to understand. He made it very simple. For example, he likened it to going into a door. He said, I am the door. Door? Anybody can go in a door. Here you uh, go in, uh, open a uh, uh, door. Somebody knocks on the door. Open the door. Go in. Jesus knocks on the door of your heart. Invite him in. Come in. You're saved, if you mean it. He likens it to um, uh, taking a drink or going to bed to rest or accepting a gift. No, more folks will be in hell because they made salvation too hard than too simple. Salvation is the simplest thing in all the world. If you know you're a sinner and know you're lost and know Jesus paid the penalty for your sin. Boys, listen to me while I'm preaching. You know Jesus paid the penalty for your sin. And you say, Jesus, I'm a sinner and I know it. And I take you as my Savior now. That moment, if you mean it, God washes every sin away, makes you His child and writes your name in heaven, and eternally you're a child of the King. Oh, make it simple, make it simple, make it simple. <laughs> There's a preacher down south was was preaching one time, and his wife was sitting out here in the, in the, in the, um, in the audience, and uh, he looked out, and she had a button on it said K-I-S-S on the, bu- on the button. And the preacher said, isn't that sweet? She's got the word kiss on the button. And he preached that morning with, with such compassion, and there was the word K-I-S-S on the button. And so he went home and he said, my, that was sweet that you wrote on that button, K-I-S-S. I didn't think you'd want to t- t- put right the word kiss on a button. She said, that doesn't mean kiss. She said, that stands for keep it short, stupid. And, uh, and I thought, that's what all preachers all do. K-I-S-S, keep it simple, stupid. And if you're as stupid as I am, you have to keep it simple. Oh, but dear sinner friend, you don't have to... Uh, go to a church and take seven weeks of lessons to get saved. You might die during those seven weeks. All you do is receive Jesus, that's all. You don't have to go to church and then learn the catechisms and, uh, and, uh, and take communion and, uh, and get confirmed. It's simpler than that. It's by simple faith in Jesus Christ. It's what a dying man can do that has just a second to live. 
It's within the reach of one who's a poor, wicked sinner who's never done anything righteous in his entire life and is on the cross beside Jesus. It's just simply saying, Jesus, I take you as my Savior. I recall one week when I was a kid preacher down in, in uh, East Texas. I, I hate to admit this. I was cleaning out the baptistry. In those days, I didn't know you were supposed to let other folks do the work. And uh, we had a little country church. And I was in a baptistry, and I had a T-shirt on with a shoulder, one shoulder sticking out a hole in the T-shirt, and uh, had old tennis shoes on, and they were wet, and my trousers were dirty. And I was up in the baptistry, and, uh, and uh, the little kids came in and said, Is the preacher here? And I said, I'm the preacher. They said, uh, uh, Would you marry my mommy and daddy? I thought, good night in the morning. That doesn't sound real good. Would you marry my mommy and daddy? A couple had, had six children. They'd gotten a divorce and wanted to get remarried. And I crawled out of the baptistry, and I wouldn't ordinarily do it. Ordinarily, I, I wouldn't do anything like this. But, but with my, my uh, uh, shoulder sticking out the corner of a T-shirt and holding a mop in one hand, I said, do you take... Well, the children were the attendants, and <laughs> one little boy was the best man, one daughter was the, was the maid of honor, and, uh, and they got married. And basically I said, you take, this, you take her back? Yeah, you take her back? Yeah, okay, you got, you, got, you got each other back. And that's about the size of it. Were they married? Yep. But you said they didn't have reception, but they got married. But you said they didn't have a rehearsal, but they got married. But you said they didn't have, she didn't have a wedding gown, but they got married. You know, a lot of people get the wedding gown mixed up with the wedding in salvation. You get, you get saved when you trust Jesus. You get saved when you say, I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm lost. I'm receiving Jesus. Well, George Whitfield used to say, Oh, sinners, if you are lost, it is not for want of being prayed for, nor for want of being wept over, nor for want of earnest anxiety on my part to bring you to Jesus. He said it's so simple. Come to Jesus, as Spurgeon used to say. If you, if you can run, run to Jesus. If you can walk, walk to Jesus. If you can't run, walk or run, crawl to Jesus. If you can't crawl, look to Jesus. There's life for a look at the Savior. You don't have to get baptized to be saved. You don't have to join a church to be saved. You don't have to take communion to be saved. You don't have to take the Holy Eucharist to be saved. You don't have to have your, uh, your, your, your wife or your husband call the priest while you're dying and let him give you a cookie while you, while you die. You don't have to do that. You say, you're criticizing other denomination. I criticize a Baptist who thought you'd go to heaven because you eat cookies on your deathbed. Amen. It's tomfoolery. It's heathenism. It's paganism. It's idolatry. You better thank God for somebody that warns you about it. Just because you died, they gather around your carcass and have a carcass and have a prayer and, and eat wafers and drink a little punch because you're dead. Don't you think for a second they're going to pray your soul out of hell into purgatory. If you've not taken time to receive Jesus Christ by faith as your Savior, you'll be burning in hell while they're trying to pray you out of hell. And what they'd better do is get on their knees and realize salvation is not by works, it's not by confirmation, it's not by good deeds, it's not by ritual, it's by by faith in Jesus and what he's done. That's the hope for heaven. Tis done. The great transaction's done. I am my Lord's and he is mine. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson flow. He washed it white as snow. I'm simply saying it's simple. And Jesus spoke to the multitudes. He spoke in terms like this. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He spoke in terms like this. Uh, uh, he that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. He said, I, come and take the drink of water. Come and eat my table and eat. Come and receive me as your bridegroom. As simple as that. 